Thank you for inviting me to present to the UAL Responsible Investment Group. I'm David Cross, a reader in art here at UAL. In 2012, I began researching climate breakdown, the fossil fuel industry, and the global financial system which supports it. In a lecture that I gave across UAL, I explored the power of images to transform public opinion. I focused on the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil rig disaster as an example of how an apparently responsible investment can suddenly trigger cascading risks across different domains. In the Q&A after the lecture, though, students confronted me, saying that academic research like this was not enough. We needed to act. UAL had said that it couldn't switch banks, so the students decided to campaign for UAL to divest from fossil fuels. They posted a petition online and staged a die-in in in the street at CSM. When they sent me this photograph later, I was surprised that just five students had taken part, and I was moved by their courage to challenge the pressure to conform and to be vulnerable in a place where they were known. The campaign went on for nearly three years, until UAL announced in 2015 that it would divest its endowments of 3.9 million from fossil fuels. We were delighted, as it shows that when everyone in the university works together, we can move mountains. And we were overjoyed that UAL had gone even further by signing the United Nations Principles for Responsible Investment. Besides divesting from fossil fuels, UAL's new responsible investment policy also avoids a range of controversial weapons and equipment and companies involved in violations of international law. In 2019, with Margot Bannerman and Claire Farrell, I helped to organise climate assemblies at UAL for students and staff to debate how UAL should respond to the climate emergency. UAL acted quickly and positively, declaring that it was responding to the climate emergency. The climate assemblies were an amazing experience, with students and staff from across the job families working together to propose a creative and holistic approach to the climate crisis. Representing one of the working groups, I said that climate breakdown is a wicked problem in which we are implicated through our finances. I said, UAL deposits student fees with the Royal Bank of Scotland, which has invested billions of pounds in extreme fossil fuels, including tar sands extraction from the land of First Nation peoples in Canada, where the ancient forests are now burning. I proposed that UAL could develop a business model which integrates its academic activities of research, teaching and learning with its business operations that channel the flows of material, energy and finance. In October 2023, UAL launched its Social Purpose Implementation Plan. The motto, from who we are to everything we do, brilliantly summarises the principle that social purpose should connect our teaching and research to how we operate as an organisation. That same month, the attack by Hamas on Israel and the reprisals by the Israeli army highlighted how finance might connect a university to deadly conflict. In 2017, War on Want had published this report showing that Israel's repression of the Palestinian people meets the UN definition of apartheid and that this repression depends on weapons financed by UK banks, including Lloyds Bank. UAL's annual report and financial statement says that UAL banks with Lloyds. So I commissioned a report by Facing Finance, an independent, not-for-profit research organisation that advocates for the socially and ecologically responsible use of money. I asked Facing Finance to research links between Lloyds Bank and the trade in controversial weapons. I used the research to make a leaflet which focuses on a few examples in their report. White phosphorus an incendiary substance which cannot be extinguished with water, but which burns flesh at ultra-high temperatures, causing life-changing injuries and death. From 2018 to 2023, Lloyds Bank directly financed arms companies involved in the production of white phosphorus with $3.2 billion. 
lethal autonomous weapons such as killer drones. The International Committee of the Red Cross said, autonomous weapons reduce or even risk removing human agency in decisions to kill, injure or destroy. This is a dehumanising process that undermines our values and our shared humanity. Between 2018 and 2023, Lloyds Bank directly financed companies producing or developing lethal autonomous weapons systems with $6.7 billion. Nuclear weapons, which are made for the mass indiscriminate killing of civilians and the total destruction of the environment. Since 2021, nuclear weapons have been prohibited under international law, and yet the risks are increasing of armed conflict escalating to nuclear war. Between 2018 and 2023, Lloyds Bank directly financed companies producing or maintaining nuclear weapon programs with $8.2 billion. Completely avoiding not only controversial and illegal weapons, but the whole weapons trade would greatly strengthen UAL's responsible investment policy and enhance its mission of social purpose. As a top priority, finance for weapons to Israel must cease immediately. The International Court of Justice ruled that Israel's actions against the Palestinian people in Gaza pose a plausible risk of genocide and ordered Israel to take all measures within its power to prevent the commission of genocidal acts and to report back to the court in one month. Yet in flagrant violation of the ICJ ruling, Israel has continued its military operation on Gaza. The pictures of Israel's latest attack on the people sheltering in tents in the refugee camp in Rafah are too awful to show here. But sanitised images of the kind of weapons that Israel uses for such attacks are still being promoted by companies including Boeing, which is financed by Lloyds Bank. Amnesty International has declared that companies whose activities impact Palestinians in Gaza must carry out heightened human rights due diligence along the entire life cycle of their products. This must include plans to prevent mitigate and provide redress for possible human rights violations, particularly through relationships with weapons manufacturers which contribute to the risk of genocide. In her report, Anatomy of a Genocide, Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Occupied Palestinian Territories, wrote, Settler colonialism is a dynamic structural process and a confluence of acts aimed at displacing and eliminating indigenous groups, of which genocidal extermination represents the peak. So ending UAL's potential complicity in the supply of weapons to Israel would be the most significant step UAL could take to prevent genocide, a move which would protect and enhance UAL's leadership on anti-racism and decolonization. UAL could work with an NGO such as BankTrack or Fair Finance International to find a bank that does not finance criminal aggression and destruction. We would be a good company. Trinity College Cambridge, the most affluent college of the University of Cambridge, has committed to divest from all arms companies. This historic decision followed a solidarity encampment by its own students and also a legal notice issued by the International Centre of Justice for Palestinians. This notice informed Trinity College Cambridge that officers, directors and shareholders at the college may be individually criminally liable if they maintain investments in arms companies that are potentially complicit in Israeli war crimes and crimes against humanity. Similarly, Trinity College Dublin has decided to divest from Israeli companies linked to human rights crimes against Palestinians. Senior Dean Professor Owen O'Sullivan said, We are glad that this agreement has been reached and are committed to further constructive engagement on the issues raised. We thank the students for their engagement. As the international student-led movement continues to gather momentum, Staff and students at UAL are building solidarity with Palestine and have collectively drawn up a list of demands which a delegation has presented to UAL President James Purnell. 
A key demand is that UAL moves to a bank that is not financing weapons for war crimes and genocide. To achieve this, I am proposing that the UAL Responsible Investment Group should extend its terms of reference to include UAL's choice of bank. This would be a decisive step in aligning our finances with our commitments as a signatory to the UN Principles for Responsible Investment and our obligations to respect international humanitarian law as preconditions for our mission of social purpose. Thanks for listening.